ahead, if you will, open your Bibles to the first chapter of the book of Colossians. We're teaching on the prayer Paul prayed for the church. Um, we have to understand. Can I say something without without it being mistaken? I know we're on, we're on the internet and so forth. The stream live without the stream won't be uploaded to the internet. <coughs> we have thousands of people watching our stuff. The epistles are written to the church with instruction in them. Uh -huh. There's reasons that there's instruction written in them. You don't get it all just because you get saved. Somebody say amen. Right. Just because you're born again does not mean that you know, everything works on the door in your life. Amen. Brother Hagin used to say, some folks think because you come to the kingdom of God, you're going to go through life on flowery beds of ease. Now, the way I always say this, some folks think that tiny Tim is outside their window going tiptoe to the tulips. <laughs> Singing to Miss Vicky. Let me tell you something. You're not tiptoeing through the tulips. The Bible says we fight the good fight of faith. Amen? To put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. Tell your pastor that, you know, it's all right for you to live in fornication with your girlfriend because you're under grace. It's not fighting the good fight of faith. That's stupidity. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Hello? Yeah. Now that one never so good. Colossians chapter 1. We're reading here, and we'll go ahead and read our verses 1 through 12 uh, from the King James Version. Uh, we, do, we do reference the Weymouth a little bit here uh, in, for clarity's sake. But Colossians chapter 1 says, Paul an apostle, Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus our brother. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Now you can underline that and understand this. He's writing to the church. I love it when people go, you know, everything they don't agree with, that wasn't written to the church. If that wasn't written to the church. And that, you know, one guy even can they even come out in one group that said this. He said, Don't bother reading James and Peter and, and John because they disagree with Paul. God. Yeah, on the subject of grace. I'm sorry. You just can't throw the Bible out because it doesn't line with what you want. You throw you out until you line up with it. Amen. 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 You throw junk out of your life until it lines up with the Bible. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Well, I don't like that. Tough! People tell me sometimes, well, the, the, uh, walk in love. God said, I don't have to be the devil's doormat. Well, that means that you can have like, you can be ugly. You remember Denzel Washington said the preacher's wife, God don't like ugly. Amen. Hello? He means you could be ugly. Uh, no, I, I remember one time, some of y'all remember this teaching years ago called motivational gift teaching. And it was real big in the 80s. This is not motivational gift. Yeah. You know, it says whether prophecy does prophesy, whether yeah, giving, yeah. you know, and, and all those things. That, and all they did was they took a set of scriptures and then applied them to psychological principles of a personality profile. Yeah. That's all they did. And then they said, prophecy motivated people were black and white, it's just this way, that way. And, and, I, and I'll, never, I'll never forget, we had somebody in our church, and when they got all of that, they got really, oh, I'm prophecy motivated. <laughs> they thought they could go around and just tell people off. You said, the Bible says, let all your words be seasoned with grace. Yeah. Uh -huh. You just can't run and put it under the excuse banner of, I'm prophecy motivated, and blast people out the front door. Mm -hmm. But I, and I, I said, just pound, I sweat. You know what I have to say about that? <laughs> Give you a fine raspberry. You know, you're still obligated to follow the rest of the Word of God. If anything, all I should do is tell you areas you need to watch out for and be guarded against and make sure you temper them in the love of God. Amen. Not as an excuse to be ugly. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Well, oh man, people just run back to the You keep being prosperous, somebody won't de prophesy <laughs> And should. Anyway, praise the Lord. That went over big. Thank you for your enthusiasm. But notice he says here, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, and he's writing to the church, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherever you heard in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is coming to you as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit as it does also in you. Since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God and truth. And again, in our first teaching on this, our first sermon on this line, we talked about how that he was talking in general terms that, that everywhere that this truth has been preached, there is, there are uh, manifestations of fruit. It did not, it was not referencing individually, each person was buried fruit. We know that's not true. Yeah. Nowhere you go, everybody buried fruit by the ship. 
Hello? Amen. Come on now, you know that's true. Amen. Some of you this morning probably thought, come on, you need to go to church this morning. I'm so ugly. Well, you know, come on to church, we'll get you help. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. And then he goes on and says, verse 7, as you learned of Epaphras, I love that word. Yeah, that guy, that dude. That's why we can speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, um, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ, who declared unto you, us your love of the Spirit. For this cause. Why? Because there is fruit among them. Because they've heard that truth. Because that grace is working in their midst. For this cause, we sense that they've heard it. Do not cease, that's what he says, to pray for you and to desire that. Now, he, uh, he can stop here. Everything after this is what he's praying and desiring for. All right. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the saint and faithful brother in Colossae. Yeah. They've heard and received the word of truth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And he begins to say, this is what we're praying for you on a regular basis. This is what we desire. And understand this, effectual prayer comes out of godly desire. Amen. Yeah. You have to have a godly desire in things to be effective in prayer. Amen. It is not effective prayer, Lord, let me have my brother's wife. <laughs> No. The answer to that is no. That's your problem when he got to talk to you about it. He might, he might even hold his eyes. Yeah. <clears throat> he might look over Moses and Moses. See, I asked you why you gave me this bunch. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, I'm just joking. Don't get a type. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen to the thing Paul says. That you might be filled with knowledge, word epignosis, the clear, precise, accurate, and experiential knowledge of his will. And in, all, and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Not only did he want to be filled with a clear, precise, accurate, and experiential knowledge of which he will, but to do it in wisdom and spiritual understanding. Those are, those are parameters around that knowledge. Why? Because knowledge comes up. So if you don't have God's wisdom and God's spiritual understanding surrounding that knowledge, you'll get lifted up. You'll get thinking, oh, I'm some hot shot. No, you're not. All, all, all I have is hot shots is their, their, their shot gets put out. You can, be a, you can be a shooting star and you'll just burn out. Amen. It's not enough just to have a bunch of knowledge. It has to be, has to be tempered with wisdom and spiritual understanding. And we cover that as we teach you. And then he goes on and says this. Um, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Praise the Lord. So, we've already covered being filled with knowledge of His will and spiritual understanding. We're getting down to walking worthy of the Lord. I'm going to say a couple of things here. Thank you. This mindset that because I'm saved, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm under grace. It's one of the most erroneous mindsets. And let me just tell you, some of you older charismatic, older word of faith people, that is nothing but excessive righteousness teaching brought back under a new title. Mm -hmm. We used to teach back in the 80s that I'm the righteousness of God. Nothing is invested because I'm righteous, nothing matters. Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, if you're righteous, you're going to act a certain way. Amen. If you're really walking in righteousness, there's going to be fruit and demonstrations of your lifestyle that's going to be manifest. I grew up in a church called the Pentecostal Holiness. Now, we thought holiness was the big hot hair through the pearl outside, the no makeup, the dusty powder on your face, and that shiny lip stuff they put on. Yeah. Hello. I mean, you go to the circle, and the Holy Ghost, but you had to wear safety goggles. Because women get sick in the head, and the pocket can start flying. Beep, 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 beep. All over the room. But we were holy. We thought holiness was all outward stuff. Yeah, yeah. When truth, truthfully, if you're living righteously, you will live holy. If you're living out of the righteousness that's in you, you will live holy. If you are living truly under the grace of God and the way that God intended it, you will live a holy, separated lifestyle. Yep. Yeah. You won't look for a reason to say, well, I can keep doing what I'm doing in the flesh and it doesn't have any pictures. Shame on you for telling people that. Amen. Well, we didn't really tell them that. We just told them that, you know, they're under grace and nothing can change your standing of God. Well, I... you better read your Bible a little bit better. Because I do know this much. Your reward to be counted based on how your works went. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get to heaven and go out of an empty basket. Yeah. Amen. Hello. And the Bible does teach you to come to a place where you reject his lordship. Yeah. 
Well, the, the, those paths are designed by people who, who think they can live, they can be under God and keep living in sin all the time. You can't do it. As a matter of fact, Paul said he prays for them that they would walk worthy of the Lord. It should be the desire of every born again believer to honor and to please God with how they conduct themselves. And you listen, what you do with your flesh does matter. Amen. Why? Because it's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't go join yourself to a heart and think that doesn't matter. You'll grieve the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. We should talk about sin. Who if the church won't talk about sin? They ain't gonna talk about it in the world. Are you here? You gone home? All the single women, I mean not all the single women, but there's a good portion of single women out there today won't go home. Nobody touches their body, their reproductive rights, and all this kind of stuff. You better stop having sex. Mm -hmm. there, there, that's, there's your rights to reproductive rights. Don't, don't get pregnant. Don't have sex. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm already pregnant. We love you. We'll, we'll cherish you. But I'm telling you, don't come to tell me that it's right. you have a right to commit abortion and kill a baby just because you want to have the right to do what you want to do with your body. And then we, we get called mean names. It's wrong. Christians, you're to walk worthy of the Lord. Now here's the deal. If you miss the mark, there is forgiveness if you can, you do have to confess your sin. Amen. The new teaching out is, you know, 1 John 1, 9 don't apply to the church. <laughs> it does belong to the church. I, there's a new Bible out that somebody found. They've taken 1 John 1, 8, 7, 8, 9 out of the Bible. Just took it out. <clears throat> they better go on and give it that other scripture too. If anyone adds to or takes away from this book, yeah. let them be a curse and that be a because they're in big trouble. It's, well, it didn't lie for our doctors, we take it out. <clears throat> you can't do that. Come on. Amen. If the Bible says walk worthy of the Lord, we need to walk worthy of the Lord. We need to make lifestyle changes. No, 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 no. that's not going to get you into heaven. But it'll get messed up life down here, I can tell you that. In other words, we don't get people coming here and say, no, listen, you got to do whatever you say in order to get in heaven. That's not going to get you in heaven. You get saved by faith through grace, by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But then after that, you, the grace still works, but it's strengthening grace and empowering grace and sanctifying grace that you walk in. You don't just say, well, you know, I'm under God's unmarried to favor and I can do anything I want to do. It doesn't work that way. Paul writes to, to brethren, faithful brethren, yeah. and saints, and tells them, I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm praying for you is that you would walk worthy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. well, why would he say that if they're already in the grace that didn't matter? Go ahead. Because what you do does matter. It does. Amen. 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 Y'all hear you going home. How many are here raise your hand? How many are not here to raise your hand? Uh, <laughs> I get you when you get home. Oh, and my mom would say, you know, Grandma, they, they run from her. She'd get the switch out. That's all right. She, 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 when they came back in, she would say anything. Feed them dinner. They get ready for bed. Get in the jammies. <laughs> They get in bed, you lay in the bed. Next day, you know, the light came on and the cover went flying. And did <laughs> 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 you run? They got double, and they didn't have any jeans or anything. They, they got what we did. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Have you been on the receiving end, the giving end, or both? <laughs> Hallelujah. Where are you out? Does matter. Let's, let's look over here in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. It's back a couple books here. To the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Let's read several verses here, real quick. Paul writes here, says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you. I, I, beseech is a word that is, is beyond just praying for them. He's begging them, he's earnestly pleading with them that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Now understand, this is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. If you go back and read Ephesians 1 through 3, that is all about the grace of God, what you have, I mean, what God's done for you, all the blessings He's bestowed upon your life. And you just got to take off and say, Woo, praise God, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And he starts out verse chapter 4, verse 1, what worthy? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. 
He just didn't drop off out of nowhere and just say, you can just do whatever you want to do. He turned around and asked because of all the things that apply to him that God asked him, yada, 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 and about the grace and the goodness and the mercies of God, all those things he puts out there, and then he, str- he comes back, what, from the, from the supply side of what God has done for them to the active side of what the believer is to do. And the first thing he said, I beg you to walk worthy. Wow. I don't like that part. I'm going to take that out. You can't take it out. Because <laughs> Ephesians 1, 2, 3 won't work for you if you take out chapter 4, verse 1. You just can't pick and choose. This is not, listen, this is not Burger King having your way. What is it? It's where McDonald's used to be. You used to go to McDonald's, you said, can I have this? That's what I'll do that. Now you remember, how many remember those days? I want, I want this without a pickle. Well, we put the pickle on it, you have to take it off. I want mayonnaise. We don't supply mayonnaise. All right? Let me say this. God, it is God's way. Now, you want to know who is original? God, my way, the highway is God. I'm telling you. You don't think so? Ask Moses. Why, why could Moses not go into the promised land? Because he struck the rock twice. He says strike it once. He did it twice. He don't get to go in. Why? Mm-hmm. God has demands. Now that I understand this, His grace has been supplied to empower you to fulfill His demands. Yes. His grace has been supplied to strengthen you so you can walk out His command, His commands or His demands, but He still has them. Amen. Amen. And He still expects you to do them. Now, He didn't expect you to do them in your power. He supplies you with His grace that will empower you to do it if you will do it. <laughs> But you just can't sit there and say the grace is going to do it for you. It won't do it for you. Just like the Holy Ghost didn't sit and do it for you, the Bible says He's your helper. It didn't say He's your doer. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. He's the helper. He's not the doer. Amen. I know you've all got the picture of the beach and the footprints and the sand and <laughs> all that stuff. I got it. That's not scripture. Right. Come on down. You walk with the Lord. Now let me say this. He said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy. He didn't say he didn't have one for you. Amen. He said it's easy, and my burden is light. Good. So you're in a little pony, he's the Clyde still, I get it. <laughs> but you still have your footprints in the sand. Yeah. Amen. They're all the so syrup. You know, like when you weren't, when you weren't, I was carrying you now. Oh, we preach sermons on it. But it's not Bible. Yeah, right. The Bible is that you're yoked up with him. Yeah. Yeah, how many know the yoke is? I mean, how many at least have enough education to farm life to know that you, when you yoke animals together, they are bound together as a team and they have to walk together to get the job done. If you don't, you don't put a mule and a horse together. Because when that horse gets loose, he's probably going to kick that mule. Yeah. I'm just going to all day with you, you sorry rascal. And you know, all you want to do is get over to eat the corn. Mules are bad about that. You used to truck with him at the back, you know, the mule would, that mule, he get, you get in there, you couldn't get in there in the cornfield, you lost him for the day. He's going to stand there and eat corn. You could beat him, whatever. He didn't, he, I mean, he had a tobacco stick to him. How many know what a tobacco stick is, huh? About that long, it's oak. You used to hang the back on it. They were good for beating you. They didn't break really easy. Right. <laughs> they were fire, they were fire killing oak. They were hard as a brick, man. Hallelujah. Well, you're yoked with Jesus. You're teamed together. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He didn't say that I just get you get up in the car and I'll pull you. Right. That's not what he said. Yeah. Amen. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We go together. And the reason it's easy and it's light is he's, he's the strength. Yeah, he's doing it right. He's the power. He's the one that helps pull it up. You, you're, you walk with him, but you've got to walk with him. You've got to walk in cooperation with him. Mm-hmm. You've got to do what he's doing. If you go contrary to that, you're not going anywhere. Good. Amen. Amen. So you are yoked with the Lord. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So Paul says here in this transitional statement, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So he gives them a command. I know people don't like this word. We don't, we don't have bed. There's no law work. The law is bondage. Please do please be. Biblically and intellectually honest, when Paul refers to law, he's not talking about you tell you you can't tell anybody what to do. He's talking about the Old Testament commands with his ordinances and writings of things that will bring you into righteousness. 
the Levitical law. He is not talking about what worthy of the vocation we were you call. That's law. That's bondage. That's telling me to do something. That's not, that's not law. Hello? Mm -hmm. There are commands before the law and outside the law. Read your Bible. Amen. You do read your Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a good thing to do. <laughs> Look over in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. We better back on verse 14. Wherefore he says, Wake thou the sleepers and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give the light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, not as fools, but as wise. <laughs> my voice is still changing. I got a lot of life ahead of me, I tell you right now. If my voice is still changing in the years that I am, man, I'm just I'm just coming out of teenage years. Hallelujah. It used to be in my twenties, it cracked so bad. So we've got to remember. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It says here, well, that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Here again, we are commanded to walk in a certain way. And it he gives, he gives a, 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 what was that word I'm looking for? I don't want to use that other word. That, you know. He gives the opposite the, 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 the antithesis. Not as fools. So he's saying here is Christians don't walk as fools. Yeah. I've seen Christians walk as fools. Amen. Didn't say they were fools, but they were walking like them. That's right. That's right. Hello? They were walking like them. They do they want to, but it don't matter. It does matter. You run your pastor down, it does matter. Yeah. Hello? I'm going to take my bath and go home and go somewhere else. It does matter. Yeah. Yeah. Just run off and do whatever you want to do. It does matter. Yeah. Hello? Mm hmm I'm going to find me another church. It does matter. Amen. The Lord showed me this. The Lord showed me that. I tell you, some people, I had a roommate at Rain. I'm going to tell you something. Every time I turn around, he said, there's my angel right there. Huh. That boy saw his angel about every other day. Now, I don't believe it. The Bible talks about those who, who say they see angels vainly puffed up in their minds. Oh, he's leaning on the bus over there. He's leaning over here. He's in the room with them. Oh, really? Every time I turn around, he's seeing an angel. Oh, man. Now he's not even serving God. Divorce. Hello? We don't need to walk as fools. We need to walk yeah, right. We need to be our lifestyle. No, listen, I'm not going to get back to how we preach with my kid at a Pentecost college boy. I mean, you know, you come in here wearing that gold ring, you're going to go to hell wearing jewelry. Yeah. Now, in that same church, the man can walk in with white slacks, a pink shirt, a Kelly green coat, and a pink top hat, and better they thought he would stop. Mm -hmm. But the woman better come in looking like death warmed over three times. <laughs> or she wasn't holy. <laughs> Hello? And she couldn't wear a, a, dress, a pair of pants. She'd go to hell. Why? Because that's what she's wearing that to pertain to a man. Well, the guy who was wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? They wore robes back then. They didn't wear pants. Come on. Y'all hear you go home? Yeah. yeah. I remember the time at the restaurant I was working, Janie came in and said, they, they called me brother. Now, you got to know where I'm from, and that day's changed. But we all had, we had white guys working in the kitchen and black girls because the boss thought that would keep everybody from fraternizing. Huh. What, where are you from? <laughs> Folks been fraternizing the flesh ever since they've been born. It don't care what color it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? They didn't care. Yeah. There was fraternizing going on in there. I mean, all the time. You think because, because you got a white guy and a black girl, they ain't going to hook up. <laughs> yeah. You crazy. Anyway, my nickname was Brother, because I got to say, I was Brother. Jane came in one day, she had on a, a shirt, blouse. Brother, your wife's going to hell. No, she ain't. Yes, she is. No, she ain't. Yes, she is. No, she ain't. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because her buttons on. Remember, women just have blouses with the button opposite of men. Right. Uh -huh. And they I made the blouse for a woman. If you put it the other way, you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, yeah, I thought you were going to hell. And she had on pants. Oh. She said she was saying she had on pants. Yeah. Wow. 
And that's what we're talking about. Thank you. You know what, though? We got, I got through to them because they, I was a kitchen manager, boss, whatever. People come say, people come, girls come and say, look, I'm sick. I, don't, I, don't, I can't work that. I need to go home right here. And I said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I want your clock out. Let's go to the break room. I'm going to come pray for you. And if you still feel bad, in 10 minutes you go home. Okay, there's a deal. They get healed. And listen, they, they, you got our employees who got kids at home and they need, they need to make bills. They don't need to go home. They need to make the money. Yeah. Yeah. They, they get healed, come back to work. Yeah. Hey, girl, come one day. She said, she said, she called me and she said, Brother, I, I found a lump this morning. I lay hands on them and prayed for her step. They come in and drive them. She came back the next day, couldn't find it. They went long after that. They started going, Brother, I got saved last night. Uh -huh. They come to our church. That's okay. And, you know, our, our church we were in was a, was a multi ethnic church. I, it was, I didn't care where they went. They were getting saved. They were getting born again. Coming yeah, to Jesus. Right, right, right. Yeah. Laid hands on one guy in the, in the stock room one day. Old Pentecost, the holiness boy. He fell out. The spirit up on top of the side. I just left him there. He came walking out about an hour later. Like, <laughs> wow, bro. <laughs> Brother Ed. Uh, <laughs> wow. Holy Ghost to hit him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, that, that holiness thing. In my church, that church I grew up in, baby, you couldn't wear pants. You had to look like death going over. They didn't even wear makeup. Now, listen, it was a white church. And so they put that white dust in power on I mean, white dust fly everywhere. You talking about death going over looking worse. <laughs> <laughs> you put that white dust, and then they put that shiny, that shiny clear gloss on. You couldn't wear lipstick. So they put that shiny clear stuff on, like the lips were wet. Dry white, shiny, shiny lips. <laughs> you better be or something. I mean, you know, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Holiness is not the outer man. Walking worthy of the Lord is living from the inner man and walking away that honors and, dis that honors and respects Jesus Christ in you. Amen? Amen. You, you know, listen, uh, somebody asked me one time, they, were, they wanted to sell. Um, <coughs> I told this recently about telling you, they wanted, they wanted to, um, they had an opportunity from someone they knew. To put in vending machines in restaurants. This is, this is 15 years ago, so. And, and in the vending machine, there was drinks, which we, the restaurants don't want to sell drinks out there. Candy bars, they really don't sell those, but they, they, they want to sell cigarettes. All right. I said, what do you think? They said, I can make a lot of money tied to the church. I said, fine, go ahead. Here's what you do sit down in front of that vending machine, get out them cigarettes, and before you put them in, say, Lord, I put these in here and sell them to the glory of God. And then I left them. And I said, okay. Came back to the next service. I see what you mean. What? I got to think about what you said. There ain't no way I could take the cigarettes and say I'm selling these for the glory of God. I told him no. Thank you. Amen? Amen. Why? You have to understand. What do we do when we walk, we should honor the Lord. Our life should be honoring to the Lord. When we're walking worthy of Him, and walking in a vocation that honors Him, Philippians 1 27, it should, it should represent Him in a way that's pleasing. Remember what we said the other day? Philippians 1 27, verse 26, that your rejoicing may be more abundant than Christ Jesus Christ, and, and for me by my coming unto you again, only let your conversation, conversation is an old English term, the manner of life, as it becomes the gospel of Christ. Now stop right there. He says here, then let your manner of life only be as become of Christ or honor or represents Christ. And that was it. The way you conduct yourself should be becoming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a holy grunt or something? Yeah. Two help me Jesuses and three all me's. Yeah, I didn't get any of that. Y'all look good at me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I know, I know it's going to sink in and be good too. See, about, about, month, about three weeks ago, I, I bought some different dog food for my dog. She's been eating the same dog food for years. And she walked over and, and walked away. Yeah. Well, wow. she wants her. Now, I, we, you know, she comes out, she's begging to get in it. And before we kind of got, she got to where we go, come on, eat. She wouldn't eat, she'd go all day long. Sometimes until the next day before she'd eat again. Now, boy, she's, she's scratching at the kill to get that first thing she wants so she can get down there and get to her food. 
Yes, sir. So I'm telling you, some of you sitting there giving me a hard time, and you won't say hey, amen, homie, or help me, Jesus. <laughs> you will get home and go, ah, that's good. Ah, that's good. Yeah, Lord, God. Amen. God wants you to live a life that's becoming the Christ. Yeah. Amen. Now let me say this. This is require a self-analysis. An, uh, an honesty with yourself. It's how I'm acting, what I'm saying, and what I'm doing, becoming the Christ. When people see that, will they see Jesus in it or not? Well, that's bondage. No, it's not. And as a matter of fact, if you want to say that anyway, I'm a bond servant to the Lord. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's what Paul said. Yeah. He said, I've become a bond servant to the Lord. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Bible, the Bible says this very clearly. He says, our life is not our own, but it's hidden in Christ. Amen. See, we started preaching freedom to the church. And people ran off with us and said, I'm free, I'm free, I can do whatever I want to do. It, I mean, I'm just free. Glory to God. That means I can do whatever. No, it doesn't mean what you, you can do whatever you want to do. You're free from the captivity of Satan and the evil taskmaster who wants to destroy you, but you are bound to Christ. Mm -hmm. We've been married unto another. The scripture says that. Christ. Which means we have an obligation to live in accordance with his wishes and his will and to honor him with how we live. Come on now. Amen. Paul said this. Now listen, you understand. I'm not talking about something that's just easy to do. You're just going to kick back and it's going to happen. Paul said, I had to buffet, not buffet, but buffet. Some of you thought he read that. Well, I had to go to Golden Crown lunch and Sony's in the morning and, and whoever, uh, the Brazilian house in my attitude, well, come away my body daily. He said, but I keep it up. He can talk about how even as a boxer in training, he has to keep his body under. Not weekly, not annually, not during revival. Now see, I remember this. We went up as a kid in our, in our church. But the only time people got serious is when we had revival. Had a week revival. We don't call them revival now. I'll tell you what, sometimes you think some people folks need some revival. We need to get serious about the things of God again. We need to be more concerned about pleasing the Lord than pleasing ourselves. Yeah, right. Amen. Your rights and privileges have been, and listen, we, we preach so much on rights and privileges, what we have in Christ, what belongs to us in Christ. We don't preach enough about being a bond servant to Christ and Him being the Lord of our life. He did not say confess to his buddy. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not what he said. Come on now. Yeah, you know I'm talking right. Mm -hmm. He did not say, whosoever shall call and upon the name of their buddy shall be saved. Y'all yeah. here you go home. Come on now. Talk to me, church. If I was preaching on the blood and washing away your sin, you'd be shouting right now. Yeah. Or you can have what you say. You get that shout out talking to God. You'd be shouting. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. But what I am telling you right now will transform your life and cause you to walk pleasing to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're honoring and pleasing the Lord and you're living a life that honors and pleases Him, His favor will be on you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So come on now. Amen. I'm talking to you here. You know I'm talking about. That the way you conduct yourself and the way you live, you have to analyze that and look at that and say, does this please God or not? And if it doesn't, you have to say no to your flesh. Right. And there'll be other Christians around you. And there'll be people on television. And there'll be other churches across town. that say, come on over here. We don't make any demands on you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do make a demand with the Word of God that you live a life that honors the Lord. Because the only place of victory, the only place that victory is found is when we are doers of the Word and not hearers only. Because James said, when you don't do the word and you just hear the word, and you really have to take something, when you hear it and you don't like it and you reject it, you have deceived yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. He said to receive with meekness, James 1. Right. Then verse 20, 21, 22, and 23. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your Suke, not your spirit, your suke. He's not talking about getting born again. He's talking about transforming the way you think and what and how you think is how you act. E.W. Kenyon said in, in his writings, he said that the Christian who does not renew their mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they do not say, soza, restore, make sound the suke of man. Yeah. You're born again. You've been made alive unto God. But you got to do something that's stupid thinking. 
And there's enough preachers out there, and they're nothing but, but they're nothing but northern carpetbaggers. Mm-hmm. I mean, not from the north. <laughs> they're charlatans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've come down after the war to rob you on pennies on the dollar. That's all the devil's trying to do. Oh, you got born again, we fought the battle. But now we're going to come in and tell you it doesn't matter what you do. You can live any way you want to live. And he's selling you a bill of goods for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. And what he's really doing is robbing you of your, your rights and privileges in Christ. Because you will once again. Did, did not Paul write and say, yield not your members as service of unrighteousness, yeah. but as service of righteousness unto God. For don't you know, I'm paraphrasing this a little bit here, don't you know that whoever you yield your members to, that is who you are serving to. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. These preachers who get up and tell you that it doesn't matter what you do with your body, it doesn't matter because you're under grace, they are out there telling you it's okay to put your members as servitude to unrighteousness <coughs> because all they want is your money. They want you to give your offerings there. They want to have a big building and say they're successful. But I am telling you, and I'm telling those that are listening on the internet, it does matter. The Bible says when I may yield my body as a member of unrighteousness, I become its servant. It's my master. Although I'm born again, I am now in servitude. Once again, to Satan indirectly. Because I yielded myself that way. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear me, don't know. Are you still here? Yeah. Who left? <laughs> Elvis says, let's do it. All right. <laughs> Come on then. God, Paul's prayer, and <clears throat> Paul's prayer, is that we would walk worthy of the Lord. He's praying for them that they would adjust actions and attitudes and how they do things and how they conduct themselves so that it honors the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now Paul is called the preacher of grace, and the preacher of grace prayed that they would walk worthy of the Lord. Because the true definition of grace is not just God's unmerited and undeserved favor. Right. It is right. to strengthen, to, to supply strength, to supply the ability, to supply things. It is a supplying from God. Yep. It is not God doing everything for you. Amen. 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 Three, the three other verse. I know we're running this a little late, but we've got to start late. All right. Colossians two six. That's right after Philippians. Paul once again writes there and says this. As ye have therefore received the Lord, the Jesus Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in. Amen. If you've received him, walk in. Let me put it to a, a little bit of a paraphrase here. If you're born again, act like it. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're born again, act like it. Amen. If God's in you, you should act a certain way. Now I'm not saying that you, know, you get born again today and the next day you got everything perfect. That's called discipling. But it's not the sight of the devil. It's okay, just do whatever you want to do. God don't care. That's not the sight of When I trained my children, my children got up as, as we went through life. We told them, no, you don't do this. It's not because I love my kids. You don't do this. You don't go stand in the middle of the street and play baseball. Amen. Because I don't want to see you as the, you know, the Louisville slugger hood on a track of trailer. Hello. You don't do that. Are you here? You, you don't. You don't take two, a bottle in and stick it in the electrical socket. <laughs> you will be, you'll be dead and good. You'll be going, you light up my life. I'm telling you. <laughs> Jess was in a room one time. She had one. Remember the little candle lamps? Yeah. With the little bitty bulb to them? Yeah. And the little lampshade that went on? Well, I didn't did know they had a plastic sleeve. You could just slide that right up. Well, Jesse, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I mean, you just didn't get rest with Jesse. You had to, like, I mean, you had to, like, strap it down. I mean, Jay took it down, just laid down there just for five minutes just to get that. But Jesse would wear you out. That young man was in there every time. The neighbor came back with him. No one went in there and The door was locked oh with the child safety lock on it. And she figured out how to get it open and escape. <laughs> That's Jesse. She slid that plastic sleeve off that we heard a scream, went in there, and she didn't. She had made contact. <laughs> no, honey, we didn't have to tell her after that. Don't do no, that. She figured that one out. Yeah. I can tell you some of Jesse's story. Anyway, 
when we trained our children, we say, no, you don't do this. You don't do that. This is not, no. I heard some people say, the Lord told me not to tell our kids not what to do, just to tell them that what would Jesus, how would Jesus do that? Oh, gosh. Well, if they don't, if, how are you going to tell them how would Jesus would and wouldn't do? They really? Are they going to figure that out wrong? Well, I don't know how Jesus would do electricity. They didn't have it. <laughs> Hello? How would Jesus do that? How would Jesus respond in that situation? Part of training them is to teach them what's right and wrong so they understand God, biblical principles and godly principles and what God has to do and not do. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Okay. You know, the Bible covers the ministry of Jesus. It don't cover everything he did. It didn't tell us which way he slept. Mm -hmm. On his side, on his back, on his stomach. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Mommy, how should I sleep? What would Jesus do? I don't know. He don't know. You know what he gave? He said, train up a child the way he should go. That means you've got some obligation on how to, how to, how to train them. you got to train them. Right? He gave you something between those ears. Most of you have it. Called brains. And in those brains, there should be something called CS, common sense. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I got that. What's that thing? I got that. He's got plenty of that. <laughs> Hello. He's got plenty of common sense. It amazes you with his wisdom. And I'm not joking, I'm serious. When you're training your children, some things are common sense. Uh -huh. Don't put your hand on the red element on the stove. Yeah. What would Jesus do? I don't know, they didn't have stoves. Amen. Now I'm saying this. The word of God tells us to train our children. Don't you think the word of God has to train the children of God? Amen? Yeah. Amen. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And walk like Him. We're to, listen, as Christians, we, we begin to look at how Jesus did. Let me say this. Not everything's going to be covered. But then there'll be principles. He did what? What? what, what did he, do? he pleased and honored the Lord. Yes. The Father. He honored and pleased the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, you're going to have to honor and please the Father. That means you're about to put your nasty, stinking flesh under. Amen. Well, see, you don't know they get to me in church. They made me mad. They were ugly to me. Crucified. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just walk off in your house. This is symbolic. Go down to get real nails. And crucify you. You're say, you back up on the cross. You got down. You're acting ugly. Back on the cross. Hello? Because how that was was not representative of how Jesus handled it. I'm laying down into a cross. He said, Forgive me, Father, but I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what, I know some of y'all. More of the sons of Zebedee side than you are Jesus. <laughs> you would have cooked them. I came here and gave my life, and they don't appreciate it. Barbecue! And get me out of here! <laughs> You know I'm right. Mm -hmm. We need to be more like Stephen than we are Peter. Yeah. Right. They couldn't get Jesus. Peter cut the guy's ear off. Stephen, when they're stoning him, looks up into heaven and sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father and says, lay not the sin to their charge. He was following yeah. Jesus. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Be imitators of God as your children. If we're going, and I know we're going late, he'll give me five minutes. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I got to give you twenty minutes. All right. I'm not going twenty minutes. I'm going to go ahead. Ten more, twenty, thirty. <laughs> go, go to First Thessalonians real quick. We're going to stop right here. I promise you, be less of change in my mind. First Thessalonians chapter two. Go down around verse twelve. Back at verse 8 and 11. <clears throat> as you know, we've been sort of confirmed and charged every one of you as a father does his children. Paul's saying, I'm like a father to my children. This is how Paul wrote it. Paul wrote it as a spiritual father to his children, giving them instruction and guidelines and insight and showing them the way. All right? And he says here in verse 12 that you would walk worthy of God. Wow. Who have called you unto his kingdom. 
and glory. Paul, listen to this, I wrote to you as a father does to his children. I have written to you and instructed you just like a father with his kids. And what's the first thing he says after that? That you will walk worthy of the Lord. Because as a father, I know if my children don't follow after the precepts I place in them, life can be hard. It can be difficult. They're going to find tough places. We tell our kids all the time, say, look, I know you think you're grown. And they think he's grown. He's big enough to be grown. All right? But he's 19. We won't talk about his mental age. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm messing with But I still like to say, son, I, I, I live longer. You think maybe some things we say are, 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 are just overbearing or whatever, but we live longer. We know more. Yeah. And so I still instruct my son to follow those trying to have a couple of time. And that's my transition now where, you know, I'll still be a source of wisdom, but I'm going to be able to instruct him with the same capacity because he's, he's, he's an adult. Too soon. I love you, buddy. I'll uh, get you when you sleep. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> don't get you when you sleep. Yeah, he thinks he, he took me down the other day, now he thinks I, I got it. I got it. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, uh-huh. oh man. Yeah. Yeah. You take your damn too. Take all of it. I tell you right now. I'm serious. But I play fair. So anyway. <laughs> next time I won't play fair. I won't either. Yeah. <laughs> That's my <laughs> sermon set up. Uh, excuse me, I shouldn't say shut up in church. Family. What's that? Shut up in French. Alright. Where was that before he started interrupting my sermon? Trying to close. As a father does his child, Paul likes the church. And if you get an insight into how, into how Paul was writing, I'm writing to you as a father does his children. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear it? Do you hear the instruction, the wisdom of Paul writing to his children? And what's the first nugget of wisdom he gives after that statement? And you are worthy. Can't you hear his voice? Listen to the kids. The wise father. Here's what I desire. That you are worthy. Because it'll bring you into peace. He didn't say he didn't want to say all this, but I'm saying that I had to do it. You hear what saying? It'll bring you into peace. It'll bring you into tranquility. It'll bring you into blessing. Not, this, not just, well, without faith it's impossible to please him. Right. You've got to live by faith. You can't please him. But that's not the only thing to please him. By attitude, by conduct, mm-hmm. the way you do things, how you conduct yourself pleases the Lord. Now, you can't please him if you don't live by faith, but it's not the only thing that pleases him. We're to honor our Father. Amen. Not bring him for a child. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I just, I just we saw an article the other day. One a major, major ministry, media ministry, uh, one of the uh, relatives got, hi- got hired as a, uh, a CEO or a CFO or something to try to find Got to dig around and find out that the ministry had 13, like, million and a half, two million dollars plus estates around the country. The wife had a personal jet. The ministry had a big million dollar jet. It was like a 737 or something. Just ride around living a little seriously. I've got an issue that doesn't please them. Well, we're, God wants to prosper. There's, one, there's, there's prosperity and there's raping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Be careful, right? I'm telling you. That doesn't please the Lord. Yeah. We got, well, we're, we're on television reach. You can reach people from all over the world from one central location. You don't have to have 13 states around the country with stations all over the country. You can reach them all over the world. But I have to have millions and millions of dollars in happens. And a hundred thousand dollar traveling trailer for your dogs. The dogs. This is not pleasing to the Lord. 
Yes, God wants you to prosper. But he doesn't want you raping people to do it. Financially raping people. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, go ask the guy working at the temple when Jesus showed up. Oh, yeah. They had them a gig going called the Temple Marketplace. They were selling doves and lambs and different things for sacrifices and stuff because the people had to do it. And they were getting over on them. Basically because they had a right to prosper. Not that way. Jesus said, my house will be a house of prayer. You turned into a den of thieves. You want to know why prosperity message took a hit? They didn't listen to that hate number one. Because he called them all in and said, stop preaching for you, preacher. Then he wrote the book, The Midas Touch. You should read that book again. We know the heart of that hate about what it was. He said, you've got to preach it long and don't kill the movement of God. I don't know if you've done it for being kind of a quandary and a, a, a lull the past few years. They yeah. wouldn't listen. Yeah, they all go out and say, I'm, I'm that thing is my spiritual father. Not if you don't listen to it. Yeah. Amen. When he's dead, yep, you can still listen to it. What? Didn't you know the Bible says that Abel's blood still speaks? Yeah. Yeah. You know And being dead, though, yet his blood still speaketh, yet speaketh. Dan's yeah. voice is still there. Yeah. Prosperity preachers, we need to have honor in how we teach prosperity. And it's not about you getting a Cadillac this year. Hmm. Or having a big house and everybody giving up so they can bless the preacher. Amen. <laughs> All right, put your guns away. <laughs> so we love the pastor. We love the pastor. Amen. We do. All right, let's stand up. Praise the Lord. Stop cocking that gun. Okay. <laughs>